Welcome to my presentation on the human digestive system presented by myself, Bradley Evans. So the contents of today's presentation will consist of structures and functions of the digestive system, mechanical and chemical digestion, enzymes and their optimal conditions, constituent food groups and a balanced diet. What is digestion? Well, digestion is a process of breaking down and absorbing nutrients from ingested food molecules and providing cells with the required energy to synthesize, grow and repair. Digestion can be split into five sections. First of all, we have ingestion, followed by propulsion, digestion, absorption of those nutrients, and the elimination of waste products. The alimentary canal, or the gastrointestinal tract, is a structure made up of a hollow tube that connects the mouth to the anus. It has four layers of epithelial tissue surrounding the lumen. The alimentary canal consists of the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small and large intestines, the rectum and the anus. The alimentary canal also utilises organs such as the liver, gallbladder and pancreas and salivary glands, and these are known as accessory organs. These don't physically process food, but they're, they're vital in assisting digestion through chemical processes in the secretion of enzymes, hormones and bile. The mouth is where digestion begins. Food molecules will enter the mouth where the teeth mechanically break down food into smaller molecules through a process known as mastication or chewing. The salivary glands within the buccal membrane will secrete saliva laced with digestive enzymes like amylase. This helps lubricate the food and catalyzes chemical reactions that break down starch into easily absorbed maltose sugars, which the body will then utilize later on in the digestive process. When food is masticated and mixed with saliva with the help of the tongue, it's rolled into a small ball that's known as a bolus. This is then passed to the pharynx by degulsion or swallowing. The pharynx, or better known as the throat, is a muscular tube that connects the oral cavity to the esophagus. Its structure comprises of skeletal muscle lined with a mucosal membrane. Its function is to transport food from the oral cavity into the esophagus, and a small leaf-like cartilage called the epiglottis will stop food from accidentally entering the trachea. The esophagus is a hollow tube that in most adults is around 25 centimetres, and its function is to carry the bolus into the stomach. The stomach's function is to temporarily store food and further digest the bolus. The stomach is able to stretch to accommodate large amounts of food and is protected by a mucosal lining that acts as a protective barrier to avoid damaging its cells through its acidic environment. Secreted digestive enzymes in the stomach, like pepsin, can help break down proteins into their polypeptide amino acids. The stomach utilizes three layers of smooth muscular fibers that, connect, that contract in different directions. This churns and mixes the bolus with the gastric juices through these peristaltic movements. Gastric juices consist of water, enzymes like pepsin and lipase, mineral salts, hydrochloric acid, and intrinsic factors that aid in the absorption of vitamin B. Once mechanical and chemical processes have further broken down the bolus, it becomes what is known as chyme. The pylorus will then force the chyme into the duodenum past the pylorus sphincter. The small intestine's function is to complete the chemical and mechanical breakdown of chyme and absorb the nutrients extracted. This is achieved through the mechanical parasympathetic stimulation and the secretion of bile, pancreatic and intestinal juices. The small intestine structure is lined with many epithelial villi that create a large surface area that aid in the absorption of nutrients. The entrocytes of these villi is what allows for the diffusion of the nutrients into the bloodstream and the distribution to cells in energy. The small intestine is split into three parts, the duodenum, the janum, the ileum. The duodenum will complete chemical digestion by neutralizing acidic contents received from the stomach to ensure that the secreted enzymes, such as lipase, peptidase, sucrase, maltase, and lactase, can function within their optimal conditions. This is achieved through the secretion of mucus containing alkaline bicarbonate from the pancreas to neutralize the acidic environment. The large intestine is divided into four areas. We have the ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid colon. The sigmoid colon leads to the rectum, which terminates at the anal canal. The function of the large intestine is to absorb electrolytes and salts from undigested material, move those waste products into the rectum, and eliminate them via the anus. The structure of the large intestine is thicker than the small intestine and does not contain a large lining of villi in the constitution of its epithelial cells. However, it has what are known as goblet cells, and these are specialised epithelial cells that deliberately secrete mucus to lubricate the faeces and assist them in the movement of the rectum. The large intestine does not exhibit typical peristaltic movements like other areas of the digestive tract. At between four to six intervals a day, a solid wave of peristaltic movement will move along the transverse colon, forcing its contents down the descending colon into the sigmoid colon, and this process is known as mass movement. The large intestine is home to trillions of prokaryotic bacteria that will ingest some of the undigestible material and produce beneficial substances like vitamin K that can help clotting of the blood and regula regulate enzymes such as insulin. The rectum will store feces and it's then expelled via the anus as waste products. 
To recap, mechanical digestion is the physical, physical breakdown of food substances into smaller molecules to efficiently undergo chemical digestion. And an example of this would be mastication. Chemical digestion is a change to the molecular structure of the ingesting material through the secretion of digestive enzymes into a form that is more absorbable by the body. An example of this would be pepsin within the stomach breaking down large proteins into smaller polypeptide amino acids, making absorption easier. What are enzymes? An enzyme is a substance that catalyzes chemical reactions in living organisms without itself being altered. We're going to look at three different enzymes and their optimal conditions to op optimize their ability to catalyze reactions. Amylase is found in the saliva and is a carbohydrate enzyme that breaks down starch into simple sugars like maltose. Amylase can be found throughout the alimentary canal and has an optimum temperature of 37 degrees and an optimum pH level of 7, making it neutral. Pepsin is a peptide enzyme found in the stomach and is used to break down proteins into their polypeptide amino acids. It has an optimal temperature of 37 degrees and an optimal pH level of 2.5, making it acidic, which is why you'll find it in the stomach. Trepsin is also a peptide enzyme found in the small intestine and secreted from the pancreas as part of the intestinal juices. It also breaks down proteins into their polypeptide amino acids, has the same optimal temperature as pepsin at 37 degrees, but differs in its optimal pH range as it prefers a more alkaline neutral pH level of 8. Enzymes that are not in their optimal conditions, for example temperatures are too high, too low, pH too acidic, too alkaline, too neutral, will begin to denature. And this is a process in which the active sites become warped, meaning that substrates can't fit into the enzymes and no catalyzed reaction takes place. This is known as denaturing. A balanced diet is, a, is considered to be one that provides the body with sufficient macro and micronutrients in the form of calories, fats, proteins, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals and fluids without over or under consuming. This can help prevent the development of dietary related health conditions such as obesity, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure or cancer. As you can see from the diagram, carbohydrates, group 2, make up most of our dietary requirements and other energy giving foods found in sources like rice, pasta, potatoes and bread. Whole grain varieties are more beneficial as they provide good sources of slow release energy sustaining the body for longer. They're also a good source of vitamins and minerals and are high in dietary fibre that regulate the excretion of waste material. Above carbohydrates we have group 3 fruits and vegetables which are our primary source of micronutrients. They're an essential aspect of our diet as they help digestion of proteins, carbohydrates and fats and are crucial to a balanced nutritional diet, even though they do not hold any actual calorie or energy value. They're naturally low in calories due to their high water content and they provide the body with antioxidants and a wide range of beneficial vitamins and minerals such as vitamins A, B, C and K. And minerals like folic acid, magnesium and potassium that can help boost our immune system. They're also naturally high in fiber and can be found in sources such as apples, bananas, oranges, leafy greens, broccoli and cauliflower and other vegetables. Group 1 and 4 can be found towards the top of the food pyramid and contain mostly proteins, primarily meat and oily fish. Alternative sources of proteins like beans can also be found in dietary fibres and protein is a macronutrient that contains amino acids and other bodybuilding foods that help grow and repair our bodies. The body must ingest some amino acids as unlike plants we are unable to produce all of them. Too little protein can lead to a reduction in muscle mass and a reduction in metabolism. At the top of the pyramid are lipids or fats which must be consumed in small amounts. They can be found in sources like butter spreads and oils and it's important to understand that there are two forms of fats. We have unsaturated and healthy fats that can, be, that can help prevent disease and found in sunflower oils and nuts, seeds and oily fish and bad fats known as saturates that can cause high blood pressure and cholesterol leading to other health conditions such as obesity and are found in foods, fried foods and butter. It's also vital that the body stays hydrated. Without water the body cannot produce anab anabolic or catabolic reactions and other crucial factors in ensuring the survival of the host organism. When not currently hydrated, cells will shrivel and malfunction and it can also upset the balance of minerals and salts, which can, a, a worst case scenario, lead to organ failure and death. Thank you for watching my presentation.